Now, Terry, can you tell me how long you've been selling books here in Montreal? Well, I started out as a book scout, selling books to other booksellers in the mid-1970s. And then I, I worked for Red Russell um, and Russell Books on St. Antoine Street for a couple of years. And then I went to work for Mr. George at Argo Bookshop. Mm -hmm. I worked there for eight years. In 1993, I opened up my own store here at uh, 2065 St. Catherine Street West. So you've been here for 18 years? 18 years, yeah. How does that feel after 18 years to know that you have to uh, close down and sell off all your books? I mean... <laughs> well, like Mr. George, who uh, retired in his 80s, and Mr. Heinemann, who used to have the Mansfield bookmark, and Red Russell, they were all in their 80s uh, when they retired. I guess I was hoping to stay here until, until I was ready to drop. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, business is business. and. Uh, the landlord had other, other ideas for this space. Yeah, now what are those ideas? I mean, from what I've read, he just wants to shut down. I mean, a few of the places next door have already mm. shut down, and I guess you're the last one holding yes, out. Yes. What are his plans with this, uh, this property? He wants to extend the sports bar uh, from the corner of uh, Fort and St. Catherine to run all the way up to the karaoke bar. So that took out uh, one, two, three, four, four retail commercial spaces. Just to expand a sports a sports bar? Yeah, a sports bar, yes. Now, what does this mean to culture in the city of Montreal? Because in this part of the city, I mean, having bookstores, having mm. libraries, which it seems mm. like this area doesn't have a lot. I mean, other than the Atwater Library, there's mm. another uh, small independent bookshop down the street. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for culture? Well, um, when you think there used to be seven bookshops in this area at one time, and the gradually they've all closed due to rising rents and uh, one thing and another. Um, I mean, we have the Canadian Centre for Architecture close by, just down uh, on Bale Street and, and Fort, and um, the AMC Forum, where I think films are a cultural uh, uh, enterprise, and the yeah. new condo unit which is being built on the corner of Lambert Closs and Janet. Um, I feel a bookshop in the area, or at least a couple of bookshops in the area, uh, could only be a good thing. It seems a shame to lose everything to a, a set of bars because bars seem to be in infiltrating the area, and that's for sure. Um, that's, I guess that's the hard point, is, is, is giving up my store to a bar. Mm -hmm. If it was something else, uh, a shoe store or a boutique or something, it wouldn't be quite so bad. But uh, beer over books, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you mentioned the condo buildings that are going up. Mm -hmm. Now, there's been a lot of talk of, in the community about the, the gentrification of Shaughnessy mm -hmm. Village. Because condo buildings are going up, do you feel mm -hmm. that the, the landlord wants to capitalize off that and try to you know, cater to this crowd of young urban professionals that might be moving mm -hmm. to the area? Well, I think his sports bar uh, sort of took off. It was a surprise to him. He didn't expect it to, uh, to be making as much money as it is and be as crowded as it is. And he opened it up, I think, before the uh, plans for the condo units were really finalized. So, uh, but I'm sure if, uh, you know, if it works out for him and he can capitalize on, on extra people in the area, he certainly will. Mm -hmm. Now, when these people start coming to the area and they want to buy books and, you know, mm. they want to experience and come into mm -hmm. a used bookshop, I mean, that experience just isn't going to be there? No, no, really it won't. It really it won't. Um, and I think it's a shame too because uh, any, any area is, uh, can only be uh, viable if it's uh, well-rounded. There's nothing wrong with restaurants, there's nothing wrong with bars, uh, but just to have nothing but seems uh, like desolation row, uh, whereas a, a nice little bookshop would be an, an oasis of uh, intelligence and knowledge trying to offset the, <laughs> the rest. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what your bookstore is. It's kind of an o a little oasis, a yes. small little shop with books mm. everywhere, like a large selection of yeah. books, where people in the community, students even, mm -hmm. because it's very close to the university, yeah. do you feel that it's losing that sense of community? I would say. I would say it is. I remember Mr. George at Arco Bookshop told me once he opened in this area because he really felt that this area really needed a bookshop to offset the bars and the... Um, which always seemed to be very prevalent in this, this stretch of St. Catherine Street. And, uh, and I agreed with him. Uh, that's why I opened up my store here, was to give Argo uh, a hand and, and you know, just try to add some sort of culture to the, 
to the area. I wouldn't want to say culture necessarily, but just just a different experience, the reading experience, the book experience. Now, also at Argo Books, they've been having some trouble trying to keep the, the shop open. They're a much smaller yes. location. Yes. Do you see that bookstores in Montreal, I mean, all over the city are under threat, especially independent bookstores? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, the owner of Mono Lisa was in yesterday. Uh, it's a, a small uh, bookshop up on St. Denis, and she said in that area, nine stores have closed in the last four years, uh, all small independent bookstores. So, uh, yes, the, the bookshop is under attack. There's no doubt about it. And it's a shame because the physical, actual physical presence of a bookstore, I think, has a lot of meaning. Uh, there's a study done uh, in uh, New York, I forget who did the study now, it was a State University of New York or whatever, they, say, they said that when a bookstore moves into the area, an area, th the crime rate drops 30%. So I think that, um, you know, bookstores are necessary. Mm -hmm. And what does uh, your bookstore, being a used bookstore, what does it mean to the city of Montreal, the fact that it's going to be gone? Well, I look upon it as just being another nail in the coffin <laughs> of civilization. <laughs> really, uh, as I said, I think uh, bookstores are, uh, for most people, uh, really enjoyable experiences. You know, they can get away from the uh, hurly-burly and the rush and crush of daily life and just come in and share thoughts with uh, Voltaire and uh, Plato and Dickens and whoever, you know, it's, it's sort of nice. And the fact that a, book, that a used bookstore has a lot of hard to find reads that you can't get at other bookshops. And, and if, you know, the city loses that, I mean, mm. is that just mean more people are going to be going online looking for books instead of shopping through little bookshops and finding those hard to find reads and titles? It, it may, although it's, it's, when you go online, you really have to know what you're looking for. Uh, when you come to a second hand bookshop and you run across a title, say by H. L. Mencken as an example, uh, that you never even knew existed before, uh, this, this is the, uh, the charm of a, uh, of a small store like this. You find uh, favorite authors with uh, journals and letters and uh, books of short stories and uh, essays that you never even knew existed. And that's why these, these stores are so much fun. Yeah. And after 18 years, do you feel like you're, you're losing a part of, uh, of yourself because you put so much effort into maintaining this bookstore? Oh yes, yes I really do. It, it's a very a traumatic experience to be, to be moving. Um, you know, I lived in my apartment on Lacazie Boulevard since 1974 and I've been here for 18 years so I'm not a person that looks, moves around a lot so to suddenly be faced with this very fast move from my store here, I was given less than a month a month's notice uh, is, uh, yeah, it's been really uh, a real test. Mm -hmm. Now, did he give you notice previously that, uh, you know, in the future you might have to shut down or was it just all um, like news to you? Well, we knew his plans to expand the bar. Uh, we found out about a year ago uh, in the Gazette, there was an article that appeared and uh, he was talking about his plans to expand the bar, but he's had a, a lot of opposition. Um, in the first place, you're putting a bar right across from uh, a college where you have an enrollment of, I guess, 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds. And who, who wants to make a bar right across the street with all of the video lottery terminals and uh, the drinking that goes on? Um, so we were never, uh, his landlord's office was never in contact with us. We never knew what was going on. We knew he was having opposition, were his plans going to be okayed by the city, were they not? Rumors abounded, and we just never really knew that the uh, the city hadn't, in fact, okayed his plans. Uh, so when I asked him one day, uh, beginning of July, you know, should I be looking for another location? He said yes. I mean, I had to go and ask him. He wasn't telling me, uh, and he said yes. I suddenly realized, boy, we, we better get a move on here and and uh, start looking for a new location. Right, and have you been able to find a new location and one at a decent uh, rent that you can afford? A decent rent and a, and a decent location. Um, so far, no. Although there is a store down the street that wants to cut itself in two, and so I'd rent half of it. And the, the present uh, um, person that's, uh, that has a space there will will have the other half. If that works, then that'll be good because I'll just be moving down the street, and, and we'll keep a bookshop in the area. But other than that, I have not been able to find, uh, you know, I've looked up in St. Lawrence and down in Notre Dame and in NDG. I've been sort of w wandering all over the place, checking out storefronts, but uh, so far nothing. 
And is there something about Shaughnessy Village that makes you want to stay in this area? Well, I've lived and worked here for 26 years. So um, I've just, you know, learned to accept this as home.